Okay, friends, I wanted to compare two of the sweetest one-handed backhands on the tour. On the left, we obviously have Stan Wawrinka. On the right, we have Grigor Dimitrov, and they both have beautiful one-handed backhands. So let's just check some things out, see what we can learn. First of all, I should let you know there's going to be a lot of commonalities here. Obviously, we started the guys in their already back position. Um, so look at some similarities here. Both of them have their weight predominantly in the back foot. You can see their front foots are not quite weighted. This is the unweighted foot. This is not too much weight on that foot. Uh, but I want to draw attention to their wrist. Look at this joint in their wrist here. Not only is it not a hump, it's concave. In other words, imagine you're riding a motorcycle and you crank it back so you give it the gasoline. Uh, that's the position that they're in. Uh, more similarities is that their racket head is very similar. It was up to by their personal head. It's their racket head, so it's way up there. Um, left arm looks very similar. Both are cradling here on the throat, which I love. Um, and then we're just going to start going through the shot. So you can see at this moment, both of them, their front feet are moving forward. And here pretty soon they're starting to plant. So now there's some weight on the front foot. But look at, even though their weight's on the front foot, their racket is still fully back. You can see a huge amount of shoulder turn here. They're both kind of looking over their shoulder. So take a look at that. Their chin is over their shoulder in both cases. So they've really cranked it up. They commit fully and they take that racket back. Uh, no joke. They, they really take it back quite a bit. Um, if you were actually looking from the other side, if you were looking at Stan from the side of the court, you could almost see uh, the back uh, of his shoulder uh, right there. Same thing with Grigor. So now uh, you can see that we're going to take a little bit further and the rackets will start to turn. I want you to notice something, uh, the different amounts of coil. So the, the legs are kind of neutral, the hips are a little bit more turned, the shoulders are even more turned. So here it's neutral, this is kind of neutral, here it's more turned. So there's different pieces. This is the coiling and the uncoiling of the shot, uh, which I think is where they have their sweet. They're using a great kinetic link. Uh, let's take it forward. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you here is uh, how similar they look. Here comes the ball into play. Now at this point, I'm going to stop it right about here because I want to draw a line for you. This ball straight across is right about here. And this ball straight across is right about there. You can see their rackets are underneath the ball, but they're not miles below the ball. They're not, you know, I think a lot of people mistakenly think their racket's going to be coming from way down in here, but it's not. You know, it's under the ball, but not massively. Now let's see them go to their point of contact. And by the way, you can see that both athletes now have their weight on the front foot to the point where the weight of their back foot is unweighted. Okay, there's not a lot of weight on either of their back feet here. Uh, so they're definitely transferring that weight to their front leg. Uh, let's take it to the point of contact and we'll see what we can see. So here's the point of contact on both guys. Uh, clearly, most of the weight is on the front foot. Uh, look at their eyes. In both cases, their eyes are looking down towards or at the point of contact. In other words, you see he's looking here, he's looking here not across the net. They're not looking over there like uh, a lot of club players do. That's a good lesson to learn. Um, both of them have very straight arms. And now what I want you to do is their arms separate. Look at how similar. Uh, so there's a the point of contact. Now watch these left arms and right arms. They're going to go in opposite directions. It's kind of like, you know, the analogy of, a, of calling someone safe in baseball. And look at their left arms. Look at really all these checkpoints. They're their, face, their chest is facing more forward, their rear leg is unweighted, their left arms are back. And now what's going to happen here, and this is where uh, I think a lot of club players mess up, their follow-throughs are monster big. Okay, So if you were to look at that right now, you would say, well, obviously, if most people try to do what Grigor is doing here, uh, you know, most of us mere mortals, that we're probably going to end up in the hospital. He's got a lot of flexibility through his chest. But that is a good indication of just what a big commitment. They start with a huge windup and they let it fly. So there's a lot of commonalities here. You can see them both scoring back up. So I just thought that that might be helpful to you in checking out two of the world's best one-handed backhands. Very similar. A lot, of, a lot of similarity there, which to me means 
there's a lot of things that we should be trying to replicate. Keeping in mind these are world-class athletes. We're not maybe going to be able to follow through like that, but uh, there's a lot of stuff here I think that we can learn from. So hopefully that's helpful to you. And if you liked it and I posted this somewhere where you can make comments, please do so below. I'd love to hear what you think. And thanks for following us.